Welcome, Assemblyman Fryman. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Max. It's great to see you. It's nice to see you. So you're keyed into an issue here in Georgia where the governor just signed into law an overhaul of uh, voting that specifically targets disadvantaged people. It, it chews into the times that people can vote. It, it pr forbids the giving of water to people standing online. And can I just get your reaction to that? It is in the wrong direction. It clearly is, it's outrageous. Um, you think about what we are doing here in New Jersey, where we are going out of our way. We just, yesterday, I believe, the governor signed into, into law um, expanding voter access, early day vote, early voting. Um, we are taking steps to increase access to the drop boxes, um, encouraging more and more people to vote, um, increasing democracy. And yet what's taking place in Georgia is the opposite. It is truly outrageous. It is truly rolling back um, and going backwards in time of what we hope to be happening across the country, which is encouraging people and making it easier for everyone to get involved in democracy and vote. What role can New Jersey play? And to that end, what are you doing in a proactive sense as a New Jersey lawmaker? Um, so as this is taking place, we can sit back and, and say, oh, isn't that a shame? And boy, isn't it great to live here in New Jersey as it relates to that? But I think we have a moral obligation to stand up and to support the residents and the voters of Georgia and other states that are planning to do this outrageous legislation um, to support them. Um, after all, um, it, it, they're, they're, they're being, Stacey Abrams and others and are, are speaking out, they're getting involved, they're being engaged. And so I'm obviously, I'm a legislator here in New Jersey. I represent the 16th district. To do nothing is absolutely unacceptable and is wrong. So I think that there are some things that we can do if we're thoughtful and we're thinking through this properly, we can take steps to send messaging and actually hopefully bring others and get others involved that will change what the legislature has done in Georgia. And that is actually applying and utilizing um, how we spend our money in, in New Jersey, how we apply our dollars. Um, so I head up the business, you know, I'm co-chair of the business caucus uh, in the assembly. And so immediately I'm thinking about, you know, are there ways that we could say, you know, maybe we should halt how we spend money in the state of New Georgia. This is not unique thought process. If you think back five years, um, six years ago, when North Carolina enacted the bathroom ban, um, you had companies, one after the other, that all of a sudden put a halt to saying, wait a minute, this is completely unacceptable. This is in the wrong direction of equality. Um, you had the NCAA pull out of North Carolina. Um, you had others, you know, Bruce Springsteen and others that stopped doing concerts there. The pressure was enormous. And eventually the North Carolina legislature relented and pulled back. Um, it's this kind of awareness and outrage that needs to take place, not only from New Jersey, but also our surrounding states and across the country and companies that need to bring it down on the Georgia state legislature and let them know this is the wrong direction that they're going in. Today, this afternoon, the CEOs of Delta and Coca-Cola issued repudiations of the new law and yet, the governor subsequently said that they didn't say anything at the time. And much of the debate right now is focused around what preventative steps people, powerful people and businesses took and, and were they complicit in the crafting of this law by not speaking up loud enough. And I guess in, in the legislation that you're examining, how do you, how do you punish those powerful forces without 
perhaps inadvertently punishing the workers and, and those yeah. who depend on these companies. So it is, I would actually say that the governor was right that when you look at specifically Coca-Cola, the, the CEOs of Coca-Cola and Delta and, and Home Depot, which that hasn't, you haven't heard from, um, who are based in Georgia. Um, initially their sponsors were, and, and it's been reported that they, they said that their response about this legislation was initially fairly benign. Um, and, and now all of a sudden they're starting to feel pressure from other corporations from outside, from their workers, they're saying they need to do more. They need to speak out. Um, so their response has been um, slow on this topic. Um, I do think that we need to be aware of the fact that if we were to call for hypothetically a boycott of products um, from these companies, we need to be aware that we might be inadvertently hurting the workers, the middle class workers from these companies. Um, when we're trying to send a message to the state legislature of Georgia. So we need to be making sure that, and really what we want is we want these companies that are based there to be helping us apply the pressure upon the state legislature of Georgia in this particular situation. So I wanna make sure that we're not venting our frustration and targeting the wrong place uh, around us. And that's why when it comes to what the proposed legislation that we're working on um, is to make sure that we're saying, look, you know, we have the ability to spend our money. Maybe we should hold back on reimbursing um, state employees when they want to go to a conference. That, you know, something you can still go to a conference, but maybe we're not going to reimburse you until they change it and relent and change their mind on this. Now, I will tell you, Max, hopefully, all this effort around this legislation and this movement is for naught. I really hope that within very short order, they come to their senses and say, you know something, let's pull back on what they've done and this goes away. Um, and that they realize that they really should be going the direction that New Jersey is going in, which is creating greater access, not more restrictive access around the voting laws. Do you trust that this kind of pressure will have a, an advantageous effect and not appear to be the Northeastern elite uh, weighing in uh, on the matters of uh, that state in question and their, their uh, mechanics and how they are tending to their own elections. That might this be a matter of bullying or perceived as such? How do you escape that? Or do you believe that it, it rises to the level of a moral obligation that crosses beyond state lines? Um, Martin Luther King said, the time is right to always do what is right. Um, and so the time is right now to, to stand up against this. Um, um, and, and you're starting to see today was reported that the CEOs of African American CEOs across the country are starting to speak out. Um, this is not just coming from New Jersey. It's not just one legislature. You're going to see this now because the outrage um, albeit it was, I think, slow to build, you're going to start to see this build and build because it is clear, it is, it is just that, it's ridiculous. Um, um, and it is blatant. Um, and so I, and I think that when we have, uh, it comes in from all angles. It comes in from the business community. It comes in from the sports community. It comes in um, from all aspects and all walks and they they will relent it's happened before um this is not just a new jersey legislature saying hey you need to change this is society saying you have gone in the wrong direction on this someone to be clear your legislature your legislation would prevent or, or prohibit those who might want to be reimbursed for a, a trip to Georgia or one of these other states that that is going down this road now uh, by the state. You wouldn't want state monies to be spent on Georgia or other states that are uh, preventing people from engaging in their basic right to vote as Americans. And, and is there more detail at this time or, or is that the basic gist of it? That's the basic gist of it is how we're spending our money. It, it, would, it would exclude um, intercollegiate athletics, so to be clear, I'm not talking about preventing our, our colleges from going into 
Georgia, for example, in, in competing there. But it's a matter of, you know, do we want to spend our state dollars uh, in those states when we have discretion not to? Um, and, and again, I hope that this is phenomenally temporary. As a matter of fact, I hope we don't even have to bring this legislation forward, that this becomes a, a non-issue. Um, but doing nothing is not an option um, on this topic. When we here in New Jersey want to continue to advance, there are even more issues that we can do to help expand voter access here in the state of New Jersey. We are not there yet in New Jersey. We are not, we just did a few steps. There are more steps that need to be done here in the state. Um, and then I, we look in other states and they're going completely opposite direction. Um, and yet we have work, more work to be done right here in New Jersey. Someone from, and I thank you for your leadership on this issue, sir. And I thank you for coming on and, and telling us about the work you're doing, the vital work. Thank you very much, Max. Thanks for your time today. Thank you very much.